Right guys, we have great news regarding Apple differentiating their supply chain and producing chips in other parts of the world like the US and Europe, and so let's delve into this. So of course, recently there's been some tension between China and Taiwan where of course, Apple mainly sources production for their chips and other parts of their products, and so as a result, products have been affected. So for example, with the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, Apple still has not caught up with the demand for these products, and so as a result, they issued a statement telling us iPhone 14 Pros are not going to be readily available in stock for the holidays, and that's not great news because when the markets rejected the regular 14s, Apple needs stock of the Pro models for the holidays, and so yeah, this is bad news. And so that's why many of us have been wanting Apple to differentiate their supply chain and produce their products in different countries because it's not great to have all your eggs in one basket. And so Apple's begun doing this where they now produce AirPods in Vietnam and of course iPhones, they're being produced in India. But now we have a report from Mark Gurman telling us Apple might further expand the supply chain and start producing ships in the US, specifically at an Arizona plant, TSMC does plan to produce. So apparently Tim Cook told this to some engineers when he was touring Europe pretty recently. He said, this Arizona plant starts up in 24, so we've got two years ahead of us, maybe a little less. And then further said, we could also see Apple source from Europe as those plans become more apparent. And yeah, this overall is fantastic news. And this is Tim Cook's speciality because Tim is a master when it comes to optimizing the supply chain. And so when there's issues with China and Taiwan, of course, having plans to produce these vital components in other places instead. Yeah, that's a good move. However, not everything is good news because if Apple does begin producing chips in the US, I'm sure the cost of producing these chips is going to be a lot more expensive because the reason Apple is so reliant on China is because of the low labor cost. And that applies to most of Asia, whereas the US has a much higher labor cost. And so that could result in price hikes for us. However, then again, if the China-Taiwan situation escalates, Apple would no longer have the option, so I'd rather have expensive products that are readily available compared to products with a low price, but is not readily available to buy. However, who knows, maybe Apple does absorb the higher cost, and then they make the money back through services in the long term, which of course, they can easily do because they make tons of money off services, and so yeah, subsidizing their products with their services, that makes sense. And actually, I just remembered, do you remember that Apple's putting more ads within iOS, which I'm not a fan of, but again, that could give us a lower price. So yes, overall, this is fantastic news, and I'm glad Apple already has plans to diversify their supply chain. And yeah, there's further evidence of this being the case. The Wall Street Journal reported that TSMC does plan to produce a $12 billion plant in Arizona for three nanometer chips, and that most likely are going to be the next A series and M series chips Apple's going to release. Anyways, let's delve into your questions regarding Apple. So Tiny Bear Tim regarding future MacBooks says, I want them to have the front chin logo and a color option to look like the classic Macs. Now regarding the front chin logo, I'm actually down for this. I think the current design looks pretty odd without the MacBook text, and so yes, bring the logo back. Now regarding a color option to look like the classic Macs, are you referring to the iBooks? Those came in colorful colors, and I would love to see colorful colors for a MacBook Air refresh, but other MacBooks for the most part were silver, which of course, Apple does still offer. However, there was a matte black MacBook Apple made back in the day, which of course, I would love to see materialize. That finish was incredible, so yes, Apple, please resurrect that. So Portray says, any update on the 12-inch MacBook rumors? And no, there has not been any update regarding this. The last report was from German, who I believe said we could see a 2024 release for this. And so yes, more rumors regarding this should appear in 2023, but either way, I'm hyped for this. I love the form factor of the 12-inch MacBook, and so resurrecting that would be amazing. And maybe it could be $800 or $700. I think that would be a perfect entry-level MacBook. And so yes, I'm still hoping it does materialize. So Zeus says, I hope future iMacs have the chin logo and the frame is the same bold color as the back, if not black. 
the white frame is terrible. Now, I'll be honest, I got used to the white bezels, but as for the chin on the front, I'm not a fan of that being a lighter colour. I do wish that was the same punchy colour as we have on the backs. But yes, regarding the logo, I do want that back on the chin because right now it does look pretty odd without a logo on the front. So Ramesh regarding iPadOS becoming more like macOS says, I doubt this. Apple's gonna keep macOS and iPadOS completely separate. And yes, I know ideally that's what Apple wants, but the iPad's in a pretty awkward situation because it has all this power, but of course, the software's not utilizing it, and so eventually the iPad and the Mac should overlap each other. So Michael says, macOS on the iPad's not likely unless it's a bare bones version when the iPad's docked. Also, I can see a 14 inch iPad being possible, but not a 16 inch iPad, unless it's a drawing screen display like a Wacom Cintiq. Now, I doubt that Apple's gonna go down that route, but yes, I think a 14 inch iPad, essentially a 12.9 inch model with thinner bezels, that could make sense, but a 16 inch iPad does seem pretty unlikely for the most part. And also regarding macOS, yes, I'm sure there's gonna be compromises, but ultimately I can live with that. I just want the iPad to be a proper computer with software that of course is fully utilizing the M2 chip. So I, Tianan, I believe, says I would love it with a display. Only thing is I have four original HomePods and five HomePod minis. They are in every room. I doubt I'll get rid of any. I'll add more to my rooms. HomePods overloads. So yes, it seems like you're pretty set with the HomePods. I also would love to have multiple HomePods around the house. The thing is, without proper Spotify integration, they're kind of useless to me because I do prefer Spotify over Apple Music. However, if we do see a full-sized HomePods, I might get a few of those to connect with the Apple TV so that, of course, I can have a proper home theater setup. And regarding that, ITNN says, would love to see a HomePod soundbar and I'm completely with you, that would be great. I think that's really the only purpose I would have for HomePods, so a soundbar below my TV would be nice. Now Joe says, I need a HomePod that works in the shower and I believe there was a concept of this, basically a portable sporty HomePod. I really like that concept, so it would be nice for that to materialize. Maybe that's also in the works. So yeah, those are all the 2023 HomePod updates. A lot of new products to look forward to, but of course, tell me in the comments, do you plan to buy any new HomePods? Anyways, that's about it, but of course, tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video above on details regarding the M2 iPad Pros. And on that note, see ya peeps.